everyone, Maya here from My Storybook, and I am so excited that you are here to join me this May for My Storybook's Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month special read aloud event where I am going to be reading a new interactive read aloud every weekday this month. That's right, we have 21 interactive read alouds for this month of May that are all going to be featuring Asian characters or children's books that were created by Asian authors and illustrators. My friends, there are so many excellent books in this month's lineup and if you're curious to know all the stories you will be reading, you can see the full read aloud lineup list on my blog by clicking on the link below in the description and there you'll see the whole list of all the books that we'll be sharing this month. Now, Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month is a special month set aside to remember and honor all the cultures and traditions and all the history that comes from Asia and that Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have brought to America. So this month, we are going to be reading all these great stories, sharing different cultures and traditions from some different Asian countries, and I'm very excited to share all of these new reading adventures with you. So to start us off, my friends, we have a very fun book about a little Japanese girl and about a very special festival that they are going to be celebrating in Japan called the Star Festival. Have you ever heard of that festival? If you have, what do you know about it? And if not, my friends, we are about to find out. So, double thumbs up if you're ready to get started. All right, let's begin. So the title of today's interactive read aloud is The Star Festival, written by Moni Richie Hadley. And the illustrator is Mizuho Fujisawa, and she does what? What's her job? What is the illustrator's job? <laughs> to draw all the pictures. Now, my friends, this book was published means that it was made and put together and created into a book for all of us by Albert and Whitman, the publishing company. And, and thanks to them, we're able to read aloud this story together today. So if I take a look here on the cover, I see that the title is called The Star Festival. What do you notice in this cover picture? Right, well, I see a lot of lanterns in the background, these lights, and lots of stars in the sky. It is nighttime. And what do you notice about what she's wearing? She has on this really nice flower dress, right? It's called a kimono, which is a special Japanese traditional dress has lots of colors and flowers this one she has has this belt around it and I noticed in the background there's lots of these colorful stands it looks like but if I look at her face what how is she feeling right now she looks a little bit worried right which makes me think and wonder what is going on because I thought at a star festival, you would have a lot of fun, right? It's a festival, but she's a bit concerned about something. So I'm wondering what is going on in this story? What do you think she might be worried about? Well, let's find out. So here's the title page of our book. It has the title, The Star Festival, our author and illustrator, and our publisher, Albert Whitman, who put this book together and is letting us read it and share it together today. And if I see here, what do you notice on this title page? Fireworks, right? And I see, oh, this looks like the little girl from the cover, except now she's not alone. She has two other grown-ups with her. Who do you think these people are? Two other women with her. It looks like mama and maybe grandma. Keiko shouts so all of Japan can hear, Today is the Tanabaka Matsuri! Ooh, it is her fifth star festival, and it is Oba's 85th. Oh my goodness. So Tanabata Matsuri must be how you say star festival in Japanese. And this is going to be her fifth star festival. So how old is Keiko? Probably five years old. And Oba's 85th star festival. So how old is Oba? 85. That is quite old. Mama hushes Keiko. What do you have? But Keiko and Oba scream together, Tanabata Matsuri! Ah, my friends, can you try to say that? Listen first, Tanabata. I say, you say, Tanabata. Matsuri. And now let's try together. I say, then you say, Tanabata Matsuri. Excellent. Keiko ties a paper wish to a branch of a bamboo tree. Oba, what is your Tanzaku this year? So tanzaku is what you call the paper wish that you hang on the branch. My wish is to eat shaved ice 
Oba says. They share a toothless giggle. <laughs> so it sounds like Keiko still is growing her teeth and Oba too is older, so she might be losing some teeth too. Oh, so they are tying these paper wishes to a bamboo tree. That seems to be one of their traditions during this festival. And my friends, if you could tie a tanzaku to a tree, what would you tie? What would you write on your paper wish? Excellent wish. Then Keiko slips on her summer kimono, so her summer dress. She watches Oba fold the right side first, then the left. Hmm? So this seems like there's a special way you put it on. Fold the right side first, then the left. Do you remember the story of Tanabata, Oba asks? No. Keiko wraps the obi round and round her waist. So the obi is this belt, this cloth belt that goes around your kimono. Mama reties it for her. So mama's going to help. And look at their beautiful kimonos, my friends. What do you notice about the patterns or the colors? Right, so beautiful. I really like Keiko's with all the flowers, but Mama and Oba have a really nice one too. So here we're going to learn about the story of Tanabata. Why do they celebrate it? One star, Hikoboshi, fell in love with another star, Orihime, who lived at the far end of the sky. He was a cowherd and she was a weaver. So he herded cows, she weaved. When they married, they neglected their work. They didn't do their work anymore. I always do my chores, Keiko smiles proudly at Oba. My friends, do you always do your chores? Hope so. Yes, Keiko-chan, how nicely you have decorated the futon with your pajamas. Mama picks up and Keiko follows. So, did she do all her chores and pick up? <coughs> no. Uh, mm. Orihime's father, the emperor of the heavens, forbade her from seeing Hikoboshi except once a year after they fulfilled their duties. How mean! Keiko puts on her geita. So those must be her special shoes, these wooden shoes. Oops! The first time they tried to meet, Orihime and Hikoboshi could not cross the Milky Way, the heavenly river dividing the skies. So a flock of magpies made a bridge with their wings and reunited them. So magpies are these birds, and since they couldn't cross, the birds made a bridge so that the two lovers could reunite and come together again. That's if I were them, I would swim across the river, Keiko says. Finally ready, Keiko and Oba trail behind Mama through town. Over the bridge, up, up, down, down, and into the sea of celebration. So they're celebrating the two lovers getting to meet in the sky and this bridge being built between the Milky Way, connecting two people who love each other. Stay close, Mama says. Okay, Keiko runs through colorful streamers hanging from the sky. Look all the decorations in this festival. What do you notice about some of the decorations or other objects in the area? Lots of colorful streamers. I see some of them are holding these umbrellas, right? Oh, some of them get pulled in these carts with the wheels and someone pulls them along. Wow. How do you think Keiko feels? So excited. Mama chases her. Oba follows. They find Keiko at the game booth scooping goldfish. So she didn't quite stay near them, right? She's just so excited she ran off to play with a goldfish. Mama says, only one. Oba slips Keiko another coin with a wink. <laughs> so, looks like Oba's going to let Keiko try again. My friends, have you ever played a game like this where you try to catch the goldfish? Did you get one? Wow. I'm hungry. Let's get some Nagashi Stolman. Keiko finds a seat at a table with a long bamboo shoot. She plunges her chopsticks into the flowing noodles. Got it! Oh, so nogashi somen is a special type of noodles. These Japanese noodles, they're usually cold noodles. And these noodles are known as flowing noodles because they're very slippery and they just flow into your belly like water flowing down your throat. <gasps> Mama catches up with her. It's delicious, Mama. The icy noodles slip right into my tummy. Ooh. Mama sits down and grabs a seat for Oba. <gasps> Except... Wait a minute. Where's Oba? I don't know. Looks like Mama looks a little bit worried. Like, uh-oh. Did they lose Oba along the way? Uh -oh. Keiko is running around so fast through the festival trying to find food and play games. Looks like they might have left Oba behind. Uh-oh. Oba? Where is Oba? Mama scans the crowd and grabs Keiko's hand. Keiko struggles to keep up with Mama. 
click, 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 her gaita bat the pavement, her wooden shoes bat the pavement. Oba, Oba, do you see her anywhere, my friends? Not in this picture. I do hope they find them. Keiko and Mama are sandwiched in the crowd and cannot move. Mama, we are stuck in Hikobashi's herd. Moo! So it looks like part of the celebration is that they pretend to have a herd of cows, right? Hikoboshi's herd. He was a cow herder. So she's pretending to moo like she's part of the herd. My friends, can you try? Can you moo like a cow, part of Hikoboshi's herd? Ready? Three, two, one. Moo! Mm. Mama and Keiko run to the beat of the drums. Boom! 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 Look at these gigantic drums. Oh, my friends, those are huge. Can you make some big drum sounds? Those are big sounds. All of a sudden, a drop hits Keiko's nose. Then pouring rain. She lets it wash her face. Mama, Orihime's tears are falling from the sky. So I think that's the, the woman's tears falling from the sky because she's so sad she can't be with her lover. Mama rests, breathing in. Why is Mama taking these deep breaths? What is she worried about? Finding Oba, right? How will we find Oba? Lift me higher. Keiko climbs onto Mama's shoulders. Whoa, she says. Do you see her? Mama says. Keiko scans the crowd. Oba-sans in kimonos look alike. But Keiko can spot Oba anywhere. Over there, she says. So she spies her. My friends, do you see Oba? <laughs> on the other side but she spotted her so oba sans is a way to say older women or grandmas in kimonos so they all look alike but keiko knows exactly what her oba looks like way over here a parade of dancers and taiko drummers so taiko drummers are those big drums they call them taiko drums a parade of dancers and taiko drummers surge like a river separating her from keiko and mama so now Oba is separated by this river of dancers and drummers. And that is reminding me of the story of Tanabata, right? Where there's that river separating the god and the goddess, right? I wonder, how do you think they're going to cross this river of people and reunite and come together again? What do you think they're going to do? Let's see. Keiko scrambles down. Mama, we need to swim across the Milky Way to get to Oba. <gasps> so Keiko's making that connection. This is going to be their Milky Way and they have to get across to get to Oba. We cannot run through the performance, Keiko. The Keiko watches the banging bachi. They swing left and right, the movement unrelenting. Then the booming stops and the dancers bow. So now they're going to pause and now Keiko dives in. She goes straight through the performance. Mama follows. They swim through the bachi, through the fans, arms, rain, and dripping wet streamers. They reach the other side. Vendors sell savory pancakes, meat on sticks, and oh, wow, look, friends. So they are going to go straight through while there's a break. And do you think they're going to reach Oba on the other side? There she is, and what do you realize that Oba has in her hand? Shaved ice, just like she wished for on the wishing tree right when she wrote it down. So there are all these vendors on pancakes, meat, and shaved ice. Keiko runs to Oba and hugs her legs. The stars helped us find you, Oba. And look who helped me, the Emperor of the Heavens. Oba thanks the security guard. So thank you, security guard, for helping Oba find her family, be safe. Right, my friends, if you're ever lost, try to find a security guard or someone who can help you find who you are missing. Just as the rain slows to a stop, the skies explode with fireworks. Hikoboshi and Orihime found each other, Keiko says. So the fireworks symbolize, yay, celebrations. The two lovers found each other again and are reunited, just like Keiko and her mama and Opa are reunited too. They also had this nice big celebration of fireworks. Wow, my friends, what a beautiful festival. When they return home, Keiko, Oba, and mama burn their tansaku. So 
they believe that if you burn your paper wishes, then the wishes go up into the heavens and your wishes are more likely to come true. Now my wish will come true. What was your tenzaku, mama? Keiko asked. Exercise, she giggles. <laughs> so mama wants to exercise more. And yours, Oba asked Keiko. Shaved ice. Keiko says, oh, so Keiko also wanted shaved ice just like Oba. And did she get her wish? Did it come true? She got some shaved ice too. I saw her there with Oba, right? The end, my friends. Oh, and here there's some more information about the Tanabata Matsuri Festival and about some different foods that they eat and some different decorations and how you can make your own tanzaku, right? If you want to go ahead and pause the video here and you can take a quick look at the page and see if you want to see any more details. All right, but if you notice that they did decorate with the tanzaku, which are the paper wishes on the bamboo trees, they had lots of streamers, and again, it's believed that the wishes come true when the paper wishes are burned. Here it says they ate those flowing noodles, the nagashi somen noodles, and they also eat things called yakisoba, which are fried noodles, or takoyaki, which are these fried dough balls. Lots of different foods, traditional foods that they eat. Those must be the goldfish you got. Not just one like mama says, but two. The end. Well, my friends, what a fun story celebrating this Japanese festival, the Star Festival, or Tanabata Matsuri. A great way to learn about how another country, a different Asian country, celebrates and some of their traditions too. Some of the stories that they believe in and some of the holidays and ways that they celebrate. A great activity to do, my friends, would be to make your own tozaku, little paper wishes. And you can write down your wishes on the paper and then maybe with the help of a grown-up, you can burn them and send your wishes up into the sky or even just hang them and tie them onto a tree or a bamboo tree if you have one at home. That would be a great activity to do. If you're looking for more bookish crafts and activities, my friends, to go along with some of these books this month or with other read alouds, you can always check out my blog down below by clicking on that description. And remember, you can also find there all the other read alouds that we will be sharing this month here on my storybook to celebrate Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month this May. All right, my friends, well, I hope you will join me for our next reading adventure tomorrow. Remember, there's a new one every weekday this week in the whole month of May. There are so many fun stories to share. So do keep up with all of our reading adventures, my friends. Please be sure to subscribe to my Storybook YouTube channel by clicking on that link below and giving this video a thumbs up. And if there are any festivals or different holidays that you want to share about that you celebrate and you want to share with me please reach out to me my friends you can find me on tiktok instagram facebook on the blog here on youtube instagram all the social media links can be found down below i'd love to hear from all of you but my friends that brings us to the end of today's interactive read aloud again remember to stay tuned for tomorrow's new reading adventure but until then happy reading